Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Weston Pew, and this is part four of our Sheltering in Place series. Jeff, how are you doing over there? I'm doing good. How are you? Man, trying to stay sane, doing yeah. some workouts. I uh, had a, a interesting workout um, yesterday with Taylor. I Skype him in, and uh, he had me buy w- one and two gallon containers of laundry detergent, mm-hmm. two of each. Mm-hmm. Um, and who knew that you could burn out your shoulders with one and two gallons worth of liquid. But um, yeah. I'm here to tell you that it was a heavy um, 45 minute workout that was done. And so was I, but wow. Hey, trying, trying. I've been taking advantage of the, the North Haven trail quite a bit. I've been walking, uh, walking as far as I can. I, my limit's about three and a half miles in terms of walking. But then last night I took my bike and, loaded it up the back of my car and went up there and rode all the way from the uh, uh, Good Shepherd uh, Good Shepherd Church there at, at Midway in North Haven, rode all the way from there, all the way over to Central Expressway, which was to the end of the North Haven Trail. And and the, it's really, it, that's a beautiful trail. If you haven't gotten out and walked on it or biked on it, it's really nice. How do your legs feel today? Um, I need to sit down shortly. <laughs> That's good to hear. It's so funny though, like when I do workouts, my, you know, the squats are like what bothers my, the back of my legs, but then riding the bike is what bothers the front of my legs. So, you know, but it was a 10 mile round trip, uh, uh, 10 miles round trip and about mile three, my legs finally stopped hurting. And then by the, by the time we got done with all 10 miles, you can continue the other direction all the way to the end and back. And it's about another five miles total. So, I think when we when we hit it again on Thursday, we're gonna uh, we're gonna actually do the whole fifteen miles round trip. So, look at you! It'll be it'll be fun. Good deal. Good deal. Well, this is also Earth Day. And yep. Had, had this been a typical um, show, we were gonna actually have um, a bee farmer come on the show, um, mm-hmm. and talk about how to get things started because, as we all have seen, bees are one of the most important little insects out there that. Um, need ours us to take care of but this is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day it started in 1970 and over the course of that time there have been I think we're up to 163 different countries around the world that participate in this at one level or another and just trying to be aware of you know Earth's ecology and and conserving our natural resources and just trying to take better care of our planet because we're really not right now (laughs) There's so many. There's so many articles that are talking about because of the decreased use of your vehicles, mm-hmm. like mountains are um, available to see that you couldn't, and yeah. just all sorts of like conditions with the, with the air. And it's like, huh? Yeah, it is. So we need to do better. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the market minute. So Anthony Jackson um, works um, for the uh, Ebby Halliday Group, and he is the Vice President of Finance and Operations. And we love that Anthony sends out Tuesday updates about what's going on in the market. And this week, Anthony put together a really good um, bulk of information about Q1. And so we're going to make this link available to everybody because it has all of North Texas and then it is further broken down by the counties. Mm-hmm. And that'll be available in the comments below. But um, as I was reading the um, kind of the summary letter of the author about what's going on, he talks about how important it is to look back to know what we're forecasting. But the true look back right now in Q1 um, isn't quite as, and Jeff's going to bring this up, the same trajectory as what we um, have seen next in Q2. Um, but his big takeaways are that uh, prices, because of lower inventory, um, mm-hmm. should remain strong and that the actual uh, um, housing market will bring us out of this um, pause in the market. Uh, mm-hmm. Interesting also to note is that during the Great Recession, there was uh, 9.5 months worth of inventory on the market, whereas today there's only a 2.7, which is still really strong um, and, and means that people are getting top dollar when the price is, when the home is priced properly and in the condition that buyers are um, ready to pay for. 
Yeah, it's a it's a dramatic difference between going into the the big recession as opposed to the great pause, yeah. uh, having that that month of supply, and and I think an important factor to keep in mind this time too is we don't have the shadow inventory at this moment right. of houses that are being foreclosed upon that lenders are not bringing into the marketplace or that owners have fallen six months behind on and the lenders just didn't want to do a foreclosure yet. So um, that, you know, there, there could be, we're, we're at the still in the, the uh, foreclosure report that I got the other day, we are still at the lowest point in the number of foreclosures on record in percentage of, of what's in the marketplace. So, um, you know, we, we may see that change because people have lost their jobs and, and, you know, they may be jobs that don't come back, but, um, and those you know, foreclosures six months from now, 12 months from now, because of the way that the last stimulus package was written, you know, it can delay that and really help tr people try to stay in their home um, and, and try to catch up at the end. So, you know, we may or may not see that change dramatically, but it's still a very, very active time in the market. Um, the, uh, uh, the one of the other points that came out of that article was that, you know, we really only anticipate the loosening of the inventory uh, to be marginal, as we've also seen a, a decline in the number of new listings that are listed for sale. And that was uh, another real interesting way that we get information from our corporate office is many times that what uh, what people see in the Dallas Morning News articles or in the you know Wall Street Journal or whatever talks about housing starts, housing sales, you know, our sales cycle is really a, a 30 to 60 day sales cycle. And so, you know, Weston, one of the things that, that I found really interesting is to watch the number of uh, showings through our showing service and see how that number reacts. Because as we see that number begin to come back up, which we have, we're, that's going to correlate to sales and transactions that actually close 30, 60, 90 days from now. It will be interesting. And, you know, I think as uh, the next article get article that you're going to talk about from the Inman News talks about how, you know, we're seeing this drop in the market and it's not going to be a V and it's not going to be a U, but they're going to change the name now. And you're going to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a, it's going to look a little bit more like a check mark. So, you know, we saw, oops, sorry. So we saw this really dramatic drop off of, of the number of showings and the, the number of things that were going under contract. And in many of the marketplaces that are large metropolitan places like ours uh, that have that are beyond the point we are in this COVID issue, uh, let's, you know, Seattle, for example, they're already beginning to, what they saw was the immediate drop off. They saw about a two to three week period where it continued to fall. But then when it began to bottom out, it went along about a week and then it began to come back up again. So the, you know, the activity is coming back up in some of those markets that might be a month to six weeks behind where we are in this uh, in the COVID issue, so I'm I'm guessing that we're going to see July, August, September be like super crazy months because you know all the all the things that cause real estate to sell: birth, death, marriage, divorce, kids moving away for college, kids moving back, kids. You know, it's all of those things are still going on. We're just we're kind of delaying the the home buying and home selling process right now. Fortunately everybody is delaying it at the same time. So when it does begin to come back, it'll probably be at the point that everybody will be ready for it to come back. I think that the housing market, um, what you're talking about, that check mark out will be gradual. I think that's the exact same thing that we're seeing um, in the economy just kind of across the board is that it will be gradual. And I think that um, gradual will be the new word that replaces unknown um, as we keep moving forward. Yeah, and, back, and just quickly back to your point about how the you know, the housing market will lead us out of this this mini pause or the great pause. Um, you know, there one of the things that is is undisputed by anybody is that every home sale generates about sixty thousand dollars of additional uh, uh, additional services and buying and things like that into every transaction that goes on. So. You know, if you're a regular buyer of a, so if you take it from the point that a seller is putting their home on the market, they go spend money at Home Depot to get it ready to go on the market. And then the house sells and then the buyer spends money to put new blinds up from Home Depot or they buy a new fridge or they buy, you know, so it it's like the, the tentacles go out from that. And then, you know, property values increase and tax tax revenue goes up. So it's 
it, you know, housing is really a really core important part of the marketplace. The other portion of that that they talk about is that not only does it add 60,000 to the economy, but it also adds 2.2 jobs. Mm -hmm. so True. Yeah. It's the, the thing that keeps on giving. And so we hope that when you're ready to, to do the market, we're ready here for you. Yeah. Um, even after this conversation that we, or even after we get done with the show right here, uh, we're going to jump on um, a conference call with a buyer from Mexico who is looking um, for a home in, uh, in the colony at the tribute. So we've got a couple of properties mapped out for him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it'll be a good time for him to make, take advantage of the market. Yeah, we, I think you um, off market. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing an off market on Saturday. An agent uh, that we worked with before reached out to us and said that, you know, knew that we worked pretty heavy in this one neighborhood and asked if we had a buyer that was interested. And we've got two that are out there in that marketplace. So we're showing one of them on Saturday. And, and we've got three closings this week. We have. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a new buyer that came in earlier this week, uh, actually on Friday, the last week. And then, you know, we've got a really cool listing on West University coming on the market. We've got a really cool house up on the Stonebriar Golf Course coming on the market. Yeah. It's, we have a, a really nice rental property coming on the market later this week up on Davenport for a friend of ours. That is, you know, this is one of those guys who just knocks it out of the park in, in terms of his rental property. So. <laughs> Well, very good. Well, what we do now is we're going to move into the portion of the show where we talk about homes that are on the market. And um, this is a, a good time for us to look at some homes. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, 2338 Crest Ridge Drive. Um, and this is over in Casa View. And, uh, and it is one of the uh, areas that's near and dear to my heart because one of the very first houses that I ever sold um, in Dallas was over there. Uh, and so whenever I see this area, and it's really interesting to see how this portion of Dallas has really caught on. Uh, it's become a neighborhood where we had two buyers earlier this year, and we got Daniel and um, mm -hmm. Philip taken care of. Um, so this uh, neighborhood has both gentrification that's taking place and not the kind where you get confused that you're thinking people are being displaced and pushed out, but um, homeowners who have lived here for 30 plus years and a new chapter in their life is starting and therefore it's available now to a lot of first time home buyers. Yeah. And this is one of those houses that was done in such a cool way where, you know, it's got granite countertops and stainless steel appliances and they've, they've created that Island with the open floor and it has the big fireplace and, you know, generous sized bedrooms. Uh, the bathrooms have been done, redone very nicely. And I mean, it's just a really, really cool house. And um, we've even got one of those uh, uh, dollhouse floor plans available on this if somebody would like to see it. And one of the things that we always talk about um, to buyers is has lift, has the heavy lifting been done? And in this house, um, the heavy lifting, has uh, some of it has been done. And the fence was replaced in 2008, um, low E windows. Um, and the HV were also replaced in 2018. So this is one of those things that really begins to not only help the house look better, but also help um, in the monthly costs. Yeah, yep, that it is. So 2338 Crestridge Drive, three bedroom, one bathroom, one car garage, built in 1954, a really remarkable property, uh, 1,687 square feet, and it's priced at $285,000. And we'd like to say uh, thank you to Carrie Hill for letting us talk about her home today. Great house. Um, so Great. now we zip over. Call us, come see it. <laughs> there you go. And then the uh, next thing that we're going to do is shift gears and head um, north of 635 over to Richland Park. Mm -hmm. um, I think, Jeff, there's paper over your camera right now. Oh, um, <laughs> and uh, that's 507 Sheffield Drive. And this is a this this is another one of the parts of town that is getting a lot of uh, a lot of attention, um, both for its school districts, for its diversity, mm -hmm. uh, and it is a five bedroom, four bath, uh, two car garage at twenty eight sixty two square feet. Pretty great little house here. It really is, and it's um, it's uh, been added onto. They added a master bedroom and a master bath onto it, mm -hmm. and it, it's funny because that you know it. It took this one from that traditional four bedroom house, which is kind of predominant in that neighborhood, 
up to a five bedroom and that really opens it up to a completely different set of a uh, different set of buyers. The other thing too about this one is because it, they've added on a second master. They didn't change the. <laughs> ah. Sorry, there's a technical difficulty. Sorry. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, they've left the first master intact. So this is a home that's really great for uh, multi-generational families. The other thing too, is that these seventies ranches quite often have a mother-in-law suite off of the mass, off of the kitchen. And this one has that plus a full bath back there. Mm -hmm. So it really made use of the kitchen and the four different corners that there are mm -hmm. last but not least, this also has a really well done pool um, on it. And they've also done some of the, the lifting and painted the house in 2019 um, and updated the kitchen in 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really cool house. Um, so to kind of recap, this is 507 Sheffield Drive, five bedrooms, four bathrooms, two car garage, built in 74, a little over 2,800 square feet, priced at 389, and that brings it in at $135 a square foot. That That's a great deal for this level of renovation and everything that you get in that house. So uh, we want to say thank you to Brian Tui for letting us talk about his home today. and. If uh, you have any interest in this home, summer's coming up, you're going to yeah. want a pool, call us. We'd love to show it to you. Absolutely. We hope you've enjoyed this segment of the show. And right now we're going to have a quick break and cut to the commercial. And then we'll be right back to talk about why you need realtors during the new construction buying process.